Hello everybody and welcome to the Chemistry 121 Supplemental Instruction video series. Today's episode is going to be a little bit different than normal because we're going to be talking about solubility and how to use the solubility chart that you see there on your screen. I'm Joey Smoking. And I'm Kevin Martin. I'll be joining this discussion today. Now, solubility, what is that exactly? Well, solubility is a term that we use to basically describe whether or not something will dissolve in water. So for example, if you take some table salt and put it in water, it dissolves, and therefore we say that it's soluble. On the other hand, if we took some sand and put it in some water, that's not going to dissolve, no matter how much we stir it or whatever. So that's going to be considered insoluble. That's right. All right. Now, if you take a look on your chart, you can see the first entry that has sodium, potassium, your group 1A metal essentially, and also has ammonium. Now, any compound containing those is going to be soluble no matter what. No exceptions. So that basically means that if anything is paired with those things, it's going to be soluble. That's right. All right. And if you go further down, you also see the nitrates and the acetates. It's the same thing as the group 1A metals and the ammonium. Anything with those is going to be soluble no matter what. So essentially those are basically all going to be soluble salts. Yes. And if you go further down, you see the chloride, bromide, and iodide ions. Now, those are typically soluble, though there are a few exceptions. That's right. And those exceptions basically mean that even though that the chloride, you know, the bromide, and the iodide, those are typically soluble, there are going to be some things that if they're paired with them, they're going to end up being insoluble. So like Kevin was saying, you know, the exceptions are going to be on the right-hand side. And for these particular halides, those exceptions are going to be if they're paired with silver or mercury or lead. And if they are, then they're going to be insoluble. And if you go down further, you'll see the sulfate ions. Now, those are also typically soluble, but like the halides, those also have some exceptions. In the case of the sulfates, those are strontium, barium, lead, and calcium. And if they're paired with those, again, remember that that's an exception and they will be insoluble. Yes. Now the second half of our little cheat sheet here basically talks about the ions that are going to be mostly insoluble. So you'll see that on the left hand side you have the hydroxides and the sulfides and if anything is paired with those you can pretty much rest assured that it's going to be insoluble. But just like the soluble half of the chart there are exceptions and the exceptions with the hydroxide and the sulfides are going to be when they're paired with the group 1A metals. And as you go further down, you'll see that there's the carbonate and the phosphates. Now, those are also mostly insoluble. Again, the exception being when they're paired with the group 1A metals or ammonium. And that's basically the little cheat sheet you got there for your solubility rules. Now, I mean, there are some other examples out there, more exceptions and all that. But pretty much, if you just look at your chart, you should be pretty good to go. And as long as you understand the concept of solubility, you should be fine. Yeah, and so you just have to look at what you have and what matches on the chart, and you'll be fine. All right, so there we go. A little bit about solubility and how to use a solubility chart. Thank All you, right. Kevin. All right, thank you, Joey. And we'll see you guys later. All right, and have a good day.